The timeline and process is different. The order of ceremony is different. The way you pay money is different. So I cannot imagine how difficult and frustrating it is for the vast number of foreign brides here in Korea that do not speak Korean. What I really wanted to do was condense down information that I found to be useful, offer it in a video in English, so that hopefully women who are currently planning their weddings, women in the future who will be planning their weddings in Korea can glean a lot of information and help from these videos. Welcome back to the wedding series. Chances are you clicked on this video because you are preparing for a wedding in Korea, will be preparing for a wedding in Korea, or you're just curious about what goes into making a wedding happen in Korea. My name's Nomi, I'm 30 years old from London. I've traveled and lived all over the world and finally settled in country number five, Korea as my forever home. Now it became my forever home when I met my fiance here, who is a Korean man himself. We are currently planning towards our wedding in April 2025. So this is a year away now. And you know, it's super, super exciting. It's such a fun process, but I have to be real. It's also a very uh, frustrating and stressful process. In this video, we will be covering things that will shock you about weddings in Korea. We will also be covering venues and how to find them, wedding planners to book or not to book, and money. How much startup money do you need to get the wedding planning process going? some fairly startling differences between Korean weddings and weddings in the UK, the US, and many other countries. First of all, Korean weddings last an hour. An hour and 30 minutes if you are lucky. Weddings are typically treated like a factory conveyor belt in the standard way of handling things. If you go to a typical wedding convention center, what you will find is that they usually have multiple stories in this one building. And on each story, there is one or more ceremony rooms or wedding halls, right? Weddings last for an hour. And so wedding teams are just farmed in and out on the hour. Typically when guests arrive, they're in a shared lobby for the whole building. They will then visit the bride in the bridal waiting room, take pictures with her. They will be seated and then it is wham, bam, thank you, Matt. There is usually a set order of ceremony. There is some, you know, means of tailoring it and means of being a little bit different. But the point is you keep it all within one hour. It's very transactional. After the ceremony, guests then go to the banquet dining hall. This banquet dining hall is a shared banquet dining hall among all of the weddings that are happening in the building. You have assigned tables, so your guests will sit at the assigned tables usually eat the buffet, the bride and groom quickly will make their rounds as fast as they can. Because again, what is typical is that a lot of people will eat their food quickly and skedaddle. People do not hang around. There is no reception. And to be honest, people kind of want to go and get on with the rest of the things that they have to do with their day. Maybe unless they're really close family and friends. It isn't super typical, but there are people these days who are now booking second venues, you know, restaurants or party rooms or halls that they can go to and have a reception. For us, we knew that we really wanted a reception. And so we ended up booking a venue with a four hour rental period. It's also a venue that is a private venue. And so there will be nobody else there, nobody else eating with us, interacting with us that is not on the guest list. On the day. Number two is that wedding venues charge on a per head cost. This is a per head for food cost. So many venues will say, okay, you need to have a minimum of 100, and 100, 100 to 150 people here. We want to guarantee that we will at least receive the money for 100 to 150 people to eat. That is, by the way, separate to your whole rental fee cost. The typical wedding halls are usually around 150 to 200 minimum. Some are 250 minimum. Whereas smaller wedding venues, you may find some venues at like 80, 70 people, maybe 50 50 people minimum if you are lucky. But it's also important to note that smaller venues in order to protect themselves and make sure that they are earning enough money will typically also have higher per head costs higher meal costs than the standard larger wedding venues. But finding anywhere under 50 people, specifically outside of Seoul, is 
really a challenge. The reason why this is important is that for those who are only wanting to throw a small wedding, and I know for a lot of foreign brides or even foreign grooms, it can be tricky because there are a lot of family members or friends who are not able to fly over from other countries. Those who are throwing smaller weddings really have to pay attention to this minimums number because it rules out a whole load of venues that you just cannot book because you physically can't make the numbers. The next shocking thing is that it is common to invite hundreds of people and sometimes people that you don't even know. Guest lists consist of family and friends of the couple on both sides, but then it's also family and friends of the couple's parents and then it's also like friends of friends and family members of colleagues and I, i'm sure you can see how the list really racks up they actually usually have gatherings where they physically give paper invites to the guests that are closest to them and then they will also create mobile invites and the mobile invites are typically sent out far and wide i don't have experience working in an office in korea but i do have experiences working in schools six schools now and typically what will happen is you will walk into the teacher's room and there is paper invite there emails will also go out to the whole school to say hey such and such person is getting married you are invited no one has 250 friends but you can with relative ease find 250 people to come to your wedding if you do it the right way wedding planners don't really plan they're more like sales associates or wholesale partners. I think it is very important to understand that there is a huge difference between the role of a wedding planner in the Western world versus the role of a wedding planner here. They are there to give you good advice on what venues and vendors to pick and get you good discounts. That's really the whole crux of it. <sighs> okay. Let's talk venues because finding a venue is arguably the most important thing you're going to do in this process. And it's also the first thing that you should be doing. Before you decide on what kind of venue that you're looking for, or you start booking viewings, you need to figure out one, a rough estimate, at least a rough estimate of how many guests you're going to have on the day. And you also need to know the time that you want at the venue. So how long, like is an hour fine? Or do you need a venue with a longer rental period? And whether or not you're actually gonna want a reception. If you have a reception, where do you want that to be? It's on my list to film a more detailed video about venues, wedding hall tours, etc. But here is a very basic overview of the types of venues out there and how you can go about finding them. So first of all, I talked a lot about it already, but there is the standard wedding convention hall. Think of the convention halls as a wedding in a box. They know how to put on a good wedding like a production. These halls are beautiful and the decoration is all included in the cost, so you're not paying extras. They have great sound and lighting systems and they do some fancy Fancy stuff with the lights, you know, as the bride's walking down the aisle. You know, they know what kind of music suits the wedding well, so you kind of pick from a list of what you want. It's very neatly, nicely packaged, but these are the, the one hour weddings and these are the shared banquet hall kind of wedding. So if you don't have any specific like romantic idea of what you wanted your wedding to look like, if you're not really that bothered and you don't really want to put too much time in the wedding planning process, you're happy for this to be done within an hour and an hour and a half, do the wedding hall. Next are hotels and hotels, they are also extremely gorgeous. There's usually a luxurious interior. They can do a lot more for you in terms of customization because you are working with somewhat of a blank canvas. They're not purpose built for holding weddings. They don't have loads of like silk flower decorations. You would typically have to pay a very steep amount of money to have fresh flower decorations put in. Hotels tend to be course meals as well. So it's usually not a buffet and course meals are a hell of a lot more expensive. If you have the extra cash lying around, consider a hotel wedding. Loved, loved, loved what they could do with the aesthetics. But as soon as I saw the cost, I, I lost my voice for a good five minutes. <laughs> There is a venue type called house wedding, which is what we've gone for. House wedding, these days they're also using private wedding as a term that you often see with house weddings. These venues, first of all, they tend to rely on a lot of natural light. They have like big windows. It's giving like 
stately mansion, stately house kind of feel in a lot of these venues. Some of them go with that European look. Others go with the very like glass house, greenhousey look, but usually there's a lot of flowers inside. It's giving a very botanical, green, stately, elegant feel. And it is really, really great for people who love the bright look at their wedding. Chapel weddings are exactly what they say on the tin. They look like chapels. Outdoor wedding venues can be such a blessing or such a curse. We, when we were doing our wedding hall tour, there was one of the wedding hall owners that said to us, typically foreigners in Korea, they just love the outdoor wedding. And I can understand why. It gives that more of like a free, easy, breezy atmosphere. It's also nice for having receptions. There's also tends to be a longer rental time at outdoor wedding venues. It's fun. It's fun when the weather is nice. The only thing I would say is that outdoor wedding venues tend to be extremely expensive. You are working with almost a completely blank canvas. So all of the decorations fresh flowers, tables, chairs, everything is most likely going to be rented. Or even if the company does have some tables and some chairs and things that they have to set up, that's all costs that you have to consider. What is included within the rental fee and what is additional. Lastly, it's nice to consider Hanok weddings. I know specifically like in and around Seoul, there's a lot of government owned or even privately owned Hanok or kind of traditional building wedding venues that you can rent for really cheap or any, even in some cases I heard you can get them for free. And I think in, in those cases, if it's near your area or in an appropriate place, it could be a really nice idea to have a Hanok wedding. Even if you have to pay the regular price, I think it's an atmosphere and a vibe that of course you can only experience in Korea, being that Hanoks are traditional Korean buildings. Things to think about, fresh flower costs again can really push the prices up. Food costs. Sometimes you might be able to get like a buffet or a barbecue or something brought in, but there are some venues where you just can't eat. And so you're gonna have to bear in mind that you'll need to find a second venue, like a restaurant or something where you can all go to and eat. So you've figured out what kind of venues you're interested in. Now, how do you find the venues to book and view? First of all, I would recommend going to Instagram. Instagram was one of my handiest tools when finding venues that I was interested in because I could also very easily see pictures of the venue and immediately know, is this something I'm interested in or is this something that doesn't fit my vision at all? When searching on Instagram, you wanna search in Korean to get the best results. So I would put your desired city or desired area plus wedding hall or wedding to bring up results. You can also use more specific searches based off of the type of venue that you want. So for example, your city, my city, Cheongju, and house wedding, Cheongju house wedding, or Cheongju yawe wedding. Cheongju outdoor wedding. Naver, being the Google of Korea, is the place that you want to head when you're not on social media. You also want to look in foreign. So I mentioned the wedding cafes before, but I also found it really helpful reaching out to girlies on Facebook forums. There's one, I think it's called Worldwide Wibugin Wives, WWW, and that's just wives, foreign wives of Korean men around the world. I found it really, really helpful to post in there, ask people where they got married, how they got married, the type of venues that they looked for. It was just really comforting to get that kind of feedback from people who actually had experience holding weddings in Korea. And then finally, so I, did get some recommendations. I'm sorry, I cannot remember for the life of me the name, but there are some directories, wedding venue directories and wedding venue websites that you can use to look for venues within Korea. Now, the reason that I don't remember the name is that within about five minutes of using it, I realized that it's really not useful for Chongju and it probably is not that useful for many smaller cities and towns. However, when I typed Seoul into the, the engine, there were so, so many options, different types of venue styles and sizes. So definitely if you are a Seoul girly or like a Putan girly or a big city girly, check out some of the directories online. But if you're a small city girly like me, then Instagram is probably gonna be your best friend. 
This topic was so contentious for me. I first asked a lot of foreign girlies online, like, what do you think? Did you use wedding planners? Is this worth your time? And the feedback was actually pretty negative. A lot of the girlies who had used wedding planners said that they just felt they didn't get very much for their money or that they felt that it was a waste of time or that they were very surprised at how little a wedding planner did and so at that point i was very much in the place where i was like i am not getting a wedding planner like this sounds like a nightmare but then i decided to do a little bit more research on the korean side i started digging deeper in the wedding cafes i asked a few questions to people who would use wedding planners and i realized that you know what the girlies who had given negative feedback were not wrong. Korean wedding planners don't do very much if you are looking at them through the lens of the expectations of a Western wedding planner. But when you understand what the role of a Korean wedding planner is and you can adjust your mindset accordingly, I think at that point you start judging them and evaluating them based off of different criteria and you may also feel a little bit less negative. First, we need to understand the cultural difference between the roles of a wedding planner in like the UK or the US and a wedding planner in Korea. In the UK or the US, your wedding planner is like an extension of yourself. They are your bestie. They are your right arm. Like their entire goal is to create the most perfectly tailored wedding experience for you that still fits within your budget. They're on the wedding day fixing your train, fixing your veil. They may even be hand steaming the tablecloths at your wedding. In Korea, that is everything that a wedding planner is not. To change your mindset, level your expectations of what you are going to get from a wedding planner over here. I made a list here because I wanted to be very specific and I didn't want to forget anything. The role of a Korean wedding planner is firstly to provide you with a list of affiliate venues, vendors, dress shops, makeup shops, etc. They're also there to give you pulling power. For example, when you've got popular venues, popular dress shops, popular photographers, many of those vendors will prioritize the clients that they get through their long-standing wedding planner partners. Particularly, dress shops have been known to squeeze you in on the schedule or to even bring out nicer dresses to show to clients of particularly high value or, pop or popular wedding planners. When that brand new dress comes in, she's like gold dust and honey when you go direct to these wedding dress shops you just need to be prepared to understand that it's probably not you that they're going to give first dibs on dresses like that your planner is also there to get you discounted rates packages and offers that you probably wouldn't know about or freebies that you probably wouldn't receive if you went direct. One thing that I've gotten through my planner is a free bouquet for the day of the wedding. Considering that bouquets can cost you between like 200 to 500,000 won, that's a pretty tasty freebie that I've had thrown in. The dress tour. So my wedding planner made me aware of this discount that if we were to sign the contract to do the Sudeme studio dress makeup contract with the wedding planner and therefore with one of these dress shops, we would be able to benefit from waiving the fee for our dress tours. When we originally booked our first Sudeme contract, we did it direct ourselves and we later realized upon further research, upon looking at the studio that was offered, there was only one studio on offer. Upon looking at the options the dress shop had, we realized we'd made a rush decision. When we met our wedding planner, for the same 2 million won, what was being offered as part of our Sudeme contract was incredible. We had so many freebies thrown in. We had a whole host of studios to choose from that were all super high quality. Also, multiple different dress shops to choose from, multiple different makeup shops to choose from. It was just a night and day difference. This is the merit of a wedding planner in Korea. So should you book or should you not book? I mean, in my opinion, I booked. Before we wrap up this video, of course we have to talk about money. I really struggled with 
understanding at all like the ballpark of what are we looking at for this wedding and also more importantly how much money do i need to like have on hand right now to at least book my wedding and maybe book my wedding planner if i want to so today i'm not going to go into all of the ins and outs of budgets just for the sake of the length of this video but it's important to keep this idea in mind the average korean wedding costs between 30 to 35 million Korean one, and that is not including like the newlywed home. Our wedding is like 10 to 15 million one cheaper than that. You can do a wedding cheaper than what we are, but it is important to keep the average costs in mind. With that being said, at the very beginning of the process, you do not need to have 20 million, 30 million, 35 million one sitting in a pot. The way that things typically work, let's say 90% of the time, is that there is a contract fee or a deposit fee that you pay to book. You pay that fee upfront, and then there's usually an intermediary payment. And again, each venue or vendor or wedding planner will have different terms for that. And then the balance is paid either at a certain point before the wedding or on the day of the wedding or like, you know, right after the wedding ceremony, that is usually what happens. For our venue, we paid 1 million upfront to lock in the venue, the date, and the time. For our planner, we paid a contract fee of 300,000 won with an 80% intermediary payment due 30 days before the photo shoot and the 20% balance payment due 15 days before the wedding. We did also put in early bookings for certain vendors because I'm just very keen and I did not want a situation where the photographers and the MCs, etc., that I wanted to work with wouldn't be available. So we found a bilingual MC. He's fluent in English and Korean. We paid a contract fee with him of a hundred thousand won we got a photographer she shoots on digital and film and we paid a contract fee of three hundred thousand won and then our videographer we paid i believe it was 100 or 150 i think the contract fee was i think it was 150 i think seoul is just exponentially more expensive than it is here in Chongju. so bear that in mind between the bride and groom i would say factor in between 1.5 to 3 million as your startup costs That was information overload, right? I am also feeling pretty frazzled because if I'm honest, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This video is a really good place to start if you're at square one and you're just wondering, where do I go from here? But please do let me know. I mean, was this video useful? Put in the comments below the most useful or even just the most interesting thing that you picked up from the video. And if there's anything that you'd like me to upload on in more detail, again, leave your burning questions below. I am honestly truly grateful that you chose to watch my video out of a sea of videos and I'm so looking forward to seeing you soon. I have got a run because I have wedding appointments and a wedding to plan, but I will speak to you soon. Okay, bye.